So most people that are new to JavaScript aren't sure of the best way of listening to input value changes within their forms. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up event listeners to listen for changes and also the different types of events that are available and which one you might want to choose for different situations. So we've just got a form on the page at the moment. It's really simple, just one text element. And the idea being is we should be able to type into this text field here and it updates this span with the message of the whatever you've typed into this particular input field. So I've already pre-selected the two elements that we need in our JavaScript code here. The first is the input itself, which is the text input here. And the second is the span with the ID of entered name display. And that's what we're going to use to actually update this message down here. So in order to listen for changes, we actually set up an event listener with unsurprisingly a function called add event listener and we call that on the input element that we've selected already so we say add event listener and this is a function that takes two arguments the first is a string and the second is a function so the string the first argument is the name of the event that we want to listen to so the first event we're going to take a look at is the input event so I'll just type input in here and this function is actually going to be the code that gets run whenever this input event is fired. And you'll see that in just a second. So what we're going to do is when the uh, input event is fired, the entered name display span element, which is going to set its text content property equal to the value that's stored inside of your name input. We can do that by accessing that element's value property. So that should be enough. Now, if we go over to the text field and just type in something here, you can see that span element is being updated with whatever I type inside of this box. So it's worth saying that this input event will fire for other reasons as well. It's not just the user typing into the text field. If the user copies and pastes some text into that input field as well, you can see that the event is still fired. And obviously the uh, text has been updated for our span element again. So there are some other events that you can listen for, some a little bit less useful than the input event. You can listen to key up events. So this is fired every time the user taps a key on the keyboard and the key is released. So uh, this will give us pretty much the same effect as input, but it will also listen for other types of keys as well, such as shift and control. And the key up event will still be fired for those keys, which is a bit different from input, which doesn't actually change when you actually hold down those sort of keys. There's also a key down event as well, which is a little bit less useful because this event is fired as the user presses a button, but it doesn't allow time for things like the input value to actually be updated. So when this line of code runs it's actually got the previous value that was stored in the input and you can see that if I type in James the s is missing because that last event that's fired hasn't had time to actually get the new value from the input field that we've got there and so we've only got the previous uh, input value if I press space a couple of times it will actually grab those extra bits uh, in there so you can kind of see it being updated. And there's a final event that's probably worth knowing about and that is the change event. This can be used on other elements as well. But if we listen for change events here on our input, if I actually type something in, you'll notice that nothing seems to have been fired. That change event hasn't been fired because we'd see the actual value of our input being put into the text content of our span. And the event is only fired when the user loses focus or blurs away from a particular field. So if I click somewhere else on the page, I'll have lost focus, the, the carrot, I can't type in that box anymore. And you can see that the event's fired and we get the updated value inside of the form element. And that's the same for things like uh, tabbing as well. Let's just write change in there. And if I tab two different elements within the form, you can see a change event is being uh, fired every time we lose focus or blur away from that input. If you are looking for a more technical advanced way of setting up data binding, which is essentially what we've done here, then you should check out this next video where I recreated React's data binding features with just a few lines of JavaScript. But that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.